Oh, praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called the Holy Spirit. That is tonight's topic, the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's open up with the book of First Samuel, okay? First Samuel chapter 9, verse 14. Let's start there. First Samuel chapter 9, verse 14. The first book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. And they went up into the city. And when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Read that again, verse 14. First book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. And they went up into the city. And when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. So now what's going on here is that Saul's father's asses were got lost. So now the Lord, uh, Saul's father told Saul and his servants to go and look for the lost asses, okay? Jump up to verse one so we get it. First book of Samuel, chapter nine, verse one. Go ahead. Now, there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the Ray. son of Abiel. Come on. The son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of Pekorath, the son of Apia, Afia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. So now, now keep going. So now he's going to give us the lineage of where the, the lineage of Saul. Okay, come on. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man. And goodly, and goodly. Read. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher. And from his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Go ahead. Now, now they're describing Saul, his stature, what he looked like. He was tall. Go ahead. And the ashes of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his soul, and Kish said to Saul, his son, Read. Take now one of the servants with thee and arise, go seek the asses. So now Saul's father said, Listen, go and look for the asses that got lost. Jump down to verse 14 now. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 14. Read. And they went up into the city. And Read. when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. So now as they came into the city, Guess what? They met the prophet Samuel, okay? And Samuel stopped them from doing that, from going out to where they wanted to go because they wanted to look for a seer to help them to find the lost asses of Saul's father. Go ahead. Verse 15, read. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, mm -hmm. Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. Go ahead. And now... And thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel. Read. That he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because they cry is come unto me. So because the Philistines were what? The Philistines were giving us hell. Do you understand? So go ahead. So Samuel now, the Lord is, is put into the spirit of Samuel that, listen, you're going to meet a man of the tribe of Benjamin. And upon him, the spirit of the Lord will be upon him to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Go ahead. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, mm -hmm. the man whom I spake of, first book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 17. And Go when ahead. Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, the same shall reign over my people. You see that thing? He says, this man right here, he says, when, Saul saw Sam, when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, behold, the man whom I speak to thee of, this same shall reign over my people, meaning the Israelites. Go ahead. Verse 18, read. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. You see, where the seer's house is because they were looking for the, for the donkeys that got lost and they couldn't find them. So the idea was, you know what? Let's go and ask for a seer. You understand? So that he may be able to direct us where we should go to look for the donkeys that got lost. What is a seer? Jump up to verse 9 so we can understand who is the seer. Okay? What is a seer? Read that. 
First Samuel 9 verse 9. Come on. First book of Samuel chapter 9 verse 9. Read. Before in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, come and let us go to the seer. For he read that, again. that is no the prophet. Okay, read the verse again, verse 9. First book of Samuel chapter 9 verse 9. Before, mm -hmm. before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called the prophet was before time called the seer. You see, a seer is another, is another word to mean prophet. A seer is another word to mean prophet. So jump down to verse 18. First book of Samuel chapter 9 verse 18. Come on. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. Where the prophet's house is. Go ahead. Verse 19. And Samuel said, and Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. I am the prophet. Go ahead. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today and tomorrow. I will let thee go, and I will tell thee all that is in thy heart. Okay, read that right. Comprehension is key. Read verse 19 again. Read it correctly. Okay, you see there's a comma there. Read that again, verse 19. First book of Samuel chapter 9, verse 19. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go. And, and tomorrow you, is as for ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. For ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go, and I will Read. tell thee all that is in thy heart. Thine heart. I'm going to tell you what's in your mind. Go ahead. Verse 20. Right? Because he was looking for the donkeys that got lost. That, was what, that, that is what was in his mind. You understand? Because his father gave him a command. Right? And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, mm -hmm. set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom, right? is, all, and on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee? And on all thy father's house? Go ahead. Verse 21. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then thou speakest thou so to me? Because now um, Saul is surprised. Why is the prophet Samuel talking to me like this? As if I am somebody that matters. You understand? That's what his spirit, because that was still at the beginning. He didn't have that spirit of pride and so forth. You understand? Jump down to verse 27. Read that. Watch this. I need you men and women to pay attention here. Verse 27. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 27. Go ahead. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, bid the servants, bid the servants pass on before us. And he passed on. Read. But stand thou still and while. But stand thou still a while that I will show thee the word of God. That I may show thee the word of God. Come on, don't mess me up. Read verse 27 again. Come on. First, first book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 27. Go ahead. And they were going down to the end of the city. Samuel said to Saul, Peter the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while that I may show thee the word of God. That I may do what? That I may show thee the word of God. That he may show him the word of God. Keep that in mind. That I may show thee the word of God. First Samuel 10 verse 1. Read that. Come on. First book of Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? That the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. That's why Samuel, we poured vial upon, he poured what? He poured a vial of oil upon his head. Okay, why? Because he was being anointed to be king. Go ahead. When thou art, depart, when thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah. 
Read. and they will say unto thee, the asses which thou went, which thou wentest to seek are found. Because and remember, no. hold on, remember what we read in chapter 9, verse 20. Read verse 20, chapter 9, verse 20, so we understand what Samuel is saying right here. Read it. First book of Samuel, chapter 9, verse 20. Go ahead. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for mm. they are found. What they are what? For they are found. Meaning the asses, the donkeys that you're looking for, they are found. So don't worry about them. So go back to First Samuel 10, verse 2 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 2. Go ahead. When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelzar. And Read. they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek of, to seek are found. Mm -hmm. And lo, thy father hath left the care of his asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Go ahead. Then shalt thou go onward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tapo. And they shall and they shall meet the three men going up to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. So now Samuel is prophesying to Saul of what's going to take place in the near future. Do you understand? This has not taken place yet. It will take place though, because Samuel is prophesying. Go ahead. Verse 4. Read. Verse 4. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of thine of their hands. Mm -hmm. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistine? And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psalm tree and a tablet. Psaltry, psaltry, psaltry. Psaltry is a is a musical instrument. Go ahead. With a psaltry and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. So now I want you to read verse five again. You see, verse five is heavy. Samuel is prophesying to Saul what's going to take place. Do you understand? This has not happened yet. Read verse five again. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse five. Great. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. Mm -hmm. Where is the garrison of the Philistines? Meaning a, an army. army. A garrison is an army, an army of the Philistines. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psalm tree, and a tablet, and a pipe, and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. So now they are, he's telling him, listen, when you come unto the place, he says, thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with, with a psalm tree. So this company, this company of prophets, they had what? They had musical instruments that they would be playing. You understand? Why would a company of prophets be having musical instruments with them? Why is that? Give me that in uh, First Chronicles, okay? 25 verse 1. First Chronicles 25 verse 1. Watch this. Okay, come on. First book of Chronicles, chapter 25 verse 1. Read. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separ separated to the service of the sons of Asaph. Asaph, of, of the sons of Asaph. Go ahead. Separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jeduth, Jeduthan, right. who would prophesy with harps and with psalm trees and with cymbals and the number of the workmen according to their service was. So now Asaph, he was what? He was the chief of the of the musicians, you understand? So it says, of Heman and of Jerithan, who should prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals, and the number of the workmen according to their service was. Because their service was, was, was to deal with music, to prophesy through music, you understand? So that's what, they, that's what Samuel is telling Saul what is going to take place, you understand? That company of prophets, they are going to be prophesying with musical instruments unto you. 
And once they do, something else is going to happen. Go back to 1 Samuel 10. Read verse 5 again. You know what? Before you get that, get Colossians 3 verse 16. Okay, Colossians 3 16. Come on, Colossians 3, verse 16. Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Let the word of Christ dwell in, in you richly in all wisdom. Come on. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Come on. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You see that thing? So they would prophesy with spiritual songs, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That's what Samuel is explaining to Saul, what is going to happen. He's prophesying already, okay? Go back to 1 Samuel now, chapter 10. Read verse 5 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 5. Read. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. Where is the garrison of the Philistines? Come on. And shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a saw tree, with a saw tree, and a tablet, and a pipe, and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. You see that thing? They are going to prophesy with these musical instruments before Saul. Go ahead. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Mm hmm and thou shalt prophesy with them Read. and shalt be turned into another man. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read that again, verse 6. Beautiful stuff right there. Watch, pay attention. Come on. The book, first book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And, and the thou, what? and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, Saul. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you, Saul. Remember what Samuel said to Saul. Get First Samuel chapter 9, verse 27. Because I know some of you forgot already. Read verse 27, chapter 9. Read that. First book of Samuel chapter 9, verse 27. Go ahead. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, bid the servants pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while that I may show thee the word of God. That I may do what? That I may show thee the word of God. That I may show thee the word of God. So the, Samuel is prophesying to Saul, listen, I'm going to show you the word of God. Guess what? In chapter 10, when he's prophesying to Saul, what's going to take place? When he show him the word of God, what's going to happen to Saul? Chapter 10, verse 6. Let's see what the word of God is. Read 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. Read. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. You stop and right there. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is the word of God in chapter 9, verse 27. That's the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is the word of God. Okay, read verse 6 again. First book of, First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt prophesy with them. Read. And shall be turned into another man. Now you are going to be changed. You are, the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And the Lord will, spend a, will send a new spirit in you. That's what, they are, they are, they are, that's what the prophet Samuel is telling Saul was going to happen to him. You understand? Once the spirit of the Lord come upon you, you are going to prophesy. You are going to teach. Okay? And... As you are teaching, you will be turned into another man because the spirit of the Lord will be activated in you. You understand? That's what the Lord is telling Saul here through Samuel. Okay? Read again, verse 6. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 6. Go ahead. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Mm. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shall Read. be turned into another man. They shall be turned into another man. Give me Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 26. 
Go ahead. A new heart also will I give you. And the new spirit will I put within you. That's what the Lord is telling. That's what the Lord is telling uh, Saul through Samuel. You understand? A new heart will I also give you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Will I give you. And a new spirit. You understand? You shall be turned into another man when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, which is the word of God. Go ahead. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Really? And will give you an heart of flesh. You see what he's saying? It says, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Meaning what? That stubborn heart, that sinful nature. The Lord says, I'm going to take it out of you. I'm, I'm going to put a new heart in you. You understand? A heart of flesh. Because flesh is soft. You understand? A stone is hard. You cannot be able to put anything on it. You pour water on a stone, it will just slide right off. You understand? That's what he's saying. That's the metaphor, the similitude he's using. Read that again, verse 26. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. Go ahead. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Come on. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh, and you shall be turned into another man. Go ahead. And I will put my spirit within you, and mm. cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You see what he's saying? I will put my spirit within you, in your mind. Because once the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, what does he do to your spirit? Get that in John 6, 63. John 6, verse 63. Read that. Okay? So we understand what's going on here. John 6, verse 63. Come on. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Stop right there. It is the spirit that what? It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The word quickeneth means change. The word to quicken means to change. It is the spirit of the Lord that's going to change you. Once the change comes, you will be turned into another man. That's what Samuel is telling Saul in the spirit of Christ. Read again. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm -hmm. The flesh profiteth nothing. Read. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are mm -hmm. life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Guess what? Remember what Samuel said to Saul. He says, I'm going to show you the word of God. What is the word of God? The spirit that quickeneth you. The spirit that changes you. Okay, give me Ephesians 2 verse 1. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Read. And you have he quickened. Have he what? And you have he quickened. And you have he. The most High God in the spirit of Christ, he hath quickened us. Okay, come on. Who are dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead, we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in what? In the trespassing against God's commandments and being in the midst of sin. But the grace of the Lord that came upon us, guess what? What it did? It quickened us. It changed our spirit. You understand? Get Ephesians 4 verse 23. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. Right? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See what happened to Saul? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind is a spirit that must be quickened, that must be changed. You understand? So you can be turned into another man. Read on. Come on. And that ye, and that ye may put on the new man, mm. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So now when you are renewed in the spirit of your mind, guess what? You're going to put in the new man with a new spirit and a new heart of flesh, okay? It says, which, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Because before the spirit of the Lord jumps on you, your mind is not after the most high God. Your mind is not created in righteousness nor in true holiness. Your mind is created in unrighteousness 
and what? And true wickedness. You understand? The spirit of the Lord is not dealing with you at that point because the spirit of the Lord is the word of God which changes you, changes your thinking, the way you think. Romans 12 verse 2. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 2. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, but mm. be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see that thing? But you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your, the only way transformation will take place, you must what? It says you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind, that's where the problem is. So once we deal with the spirit of the Lord jumps on you it deals with your mind that's when transformation take place that's when you will be turned into another man another woman go ahead that you may prove what is that good and acceptable mm. and perfect will of god you must prove this bible to be true by the way you move by allowing the change which is through the scriptures the spirit of the lord to change the way you think the way you do things you understand? You are no longer that whore you used to be in the world. You are no longer that whoremonger that you used to be in the world. You're no longer that thief, that liar, you understand, that used to be in the world. You're no longer that brother that bears hatred to your neighbor. You're no longer that brother. You're, the spirit of the Lord is quickening you, is changing you. That's the transformation is talking about. That's how you're going to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High God. Give me Ezekiel chapter 18, okay? Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Watch this. Come on. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 30. Read. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Read. Read. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity mm -hmm. will not be your ruin. You see that thing? It says, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Remember what you read in Ephesians 2 verse 1. It says, and you have he quickened who were in what? In trespasses and sins. The Lord will quicken us when we repent. Okay? So iniquity shall not be our ruin. So we don't die in our sins. Next verse. Read on. Cast away from all your transgressions. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 31. Come Cast on. away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a mm -hmm. new spirit. For and why what? will you die? And make a new what? Read that part again. And make you a new heart and make a you, new spirit. Make you a new heart and a new spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will quicken you. The spirit of the Lord that will change you into another man. The word of which is the word of God. Okay. Read that part again, verse 31. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. For Read. why will you die, O house of mm. Israel? Why will you die in your sins? Why will you allow iniquity to be your ruin, O house of Israel? You're, that's what the Lord is asking. So he's teaching us to repent. You understand? When the spirit of the Lord, which is the word of God, comes upon us, we are going to be changed and turned into new men, new women, because we'll have a new mind and a new spirit within us that the Lord will pour upon us. Okay? That's what he's saying right there. Now go back to 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. Now we have a better understanding what Saul, Samuel, was telling Saul. Okay? Read 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. Again, come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verses 6. Go ahead. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shalt be turned into another man. You are going to be pro you're going to prophesy with them. Who's the them? A company of prophets that will come down from the high places with salty, with those playing with those musical instruments. You will prophesy with this with the company of prophets that will what? That will come upon you. You understand that you are going to meet. Read on. Verse 7. Come on. Verse 7. And let it be. When these signs are come unto thee. 
that mm -hmm. thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Because God will be with you at that point. When you meet this company of prophets and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you, you are going to prophesy with the company of prophets. You'll be turned into another man. Then at that point, the Lord is with you. You see that thing? Because the word of God that will be shown unto you will come upon you, which is the spirit of Christ. Read. And thou shalt go down before me in Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Read. Seven days shall thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what, shall, what thou shalt do. So now we remember he said, he says, and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. Okay. He says, you're going to do that. You're going to go before me to Gilgal. He says, he says, and he says, you shall tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Next verse. Go ahead. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And what did the Lord do? God gave him another heart. The most High God is the one that will do that thing. Not man, the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the most high God is the one that will give you another heart, a new heart, a sinless heart, a repenting spirit. Only the spirit of the Lord will do that because the Lord will bring you into this truth for you to get your mind right. You understand? Because the Lord saw something in you that can be used for you to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's how you have to look at it. You understand? Don't take this for granted. Read that again. Okay. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Mm -hmm. And all those signs came to pass that day. The signs that were pro Samuel was prophesying about, you understand, in the chapter already that we read. But he says, and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, because when he turned his back to go from Samuel, where did he go? He went to Gilgal. When Samuel said, you're going to wait for me there. You understand? Like we read in verse 8. Okay, come on. Verse 10. Read. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 10. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And mm -hmm. the Spirit of God came upon him. And he prophesied among them. So now the prophecy is coming to pass now. The prophecy is being fulfilled. You understand? Because what we read in verse 5 is as you're going to meet a company of prophets. And here what we're reading here is as what he did indeed met the company of prophets. Because the spirit of the Lord was on our forefather, the prophet Samuel. You understand? Read that again, verse 10. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 10. Pray. And when they came hither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. He prophesied among the company of prophets. You understand? Read. Really? And it came to pass when all that he, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What mm. is this that has happened to the son of Kish? No. What is this? He says, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Pay attention. Come on. What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is so also among the prophets? You see what they are asking? It says, when all that knew him before time saw that, meaning what? Just like you when you come into this truth, right? Before you come into this truth, the people just know you as that wicked Negro in the world. That wicked Negro, that, that, that shameless whore that you used to be. You understand? So now, when you come into the truth, the spirit of the Lord comes upon you you change, you become somebody different that they don't recognize. That's exactly what they're going to say about you. You understand? It says, when all, it says, when all that knew him before time saw that, what did they see? They saw that he was prophesying among the prophets. Now they see the, the, the brothers and sisters that used to know you in the world, now they see you in the streets. Hey, what's going on? Why are you dressed like that? Why are you standing here screaming the Bible out? What's going on? You begin to explain. You understand? Read that again, verse 11. That goes for your family members. 
family members as well. You understand? Your mother, your father, your brothers, your siblings that you grew up with. They don't, they don't even believe what you're saying because they grew up before you. They don't believe nothing you tell them because they say, no, but you grew up before us. Why must we listen to you? You see, you see that thing? So it's difficult to, uh, to get to them because they are, they're dealing with you based on how they used to know you before time you came into this truth. You understand? Let's get that real quick. Get that in, um, get that in uh, Matthew chapter 13. Okay, Matthew 13, might be verse 30, 55 somewhere. Let me see. Yes, read that. Matthew chapter 13, read verse 57. Okay. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 57. Go ahead. And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. You see what he's saying? He says his brothers and sisters were offended at him. Why? Because he said, because he was teaching them the scriptures. They didn't believe anything he was saying. That's why he's saying a prophet is not without honor. He's saying the prophet is with honor except in his own house, except in his own country, and in his own house. You understand? But a prophet does have honor. That's what he's saying. Read verse 58. Come on. And he, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because they did not believe. So he did not, he was unable to perform mighty works among the brothers and sisters that he grew up with. Because they used to know him before time as what? They didn't know him as the mighty prophet of Israel. You understand? Just like they look at you today. They don't believe anything you're saying. You the prophet? Come on, bro. Stop it. I went to school with you. What are you talking about? You understand? Get that in John 7, verse 1. John 7, verse 1. Come on. Chapter 7, verse 1. Read. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he walked not, for he would not walk in Turi, because the Jews sought to kill him. Because they hated Christ and what he was teaching, what he stood for. Go ahead. Now the Jews, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. So it was during the feast of tabernacles. Go ahead. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. So his brethren is the same brothers and sisters that he grew up with. You understand? Get, go back to Matthew 13, verse 55 now. Matthew 13, verse 55. It says, his brethren. Who are his brethren? Let's read about them here. Okay? These are the biological brethren that he had. Okay? Read that. Matthew 13, verse 55. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 55. Is Read. not this the carpenter's son? Mm. Is not this, is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? See that thing? So he says, listen, this is the carpenter's son. This is Joseph's boy, okay? We know him and we also know his family too. We know his brothers. We know James. We know Joseph. We know Simon. We know Judas. Go ahead. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Mm -hmm. When then had this man all these things? How does he know all these things? You know, he says, we also know his sisters too. So go back to John 7. Okay, John chapter 7. Read verse 3 again. The book of John chapter 7 verse 3. His Pray. brethren, they forced it unto him. Come on. Depart him and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. His brethren is talking about the same brethren that we read in Matthew 13. Next verse, come on. For there is, for there is no man that doeth anything in secret, mm -hmm. and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. He says, show yourself to the world. Go ahead, watch this. Next verse, read. For neither did his brethren believe in him. See that thing? The same brethren in verse 3, the same brethren in Matthew 13. They didn't believe him. That's the same thing that, that we are reading in 1 Samuel 10 regarding Saul. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 1. Read that. 
Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5, verse 1. We're still dealing with what, what they are saying about Saul. You understand? When he says, listen, he's also prophesying among the prophets. You understand? What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Hmm? This, this brother, you understand? This sister, oh, you wearing dresses now. Hmm, you don't celebrate Christmas no more. Boo-hoo. That's how they look at you. You understand? But Christmas is of the devil. Okay? Yeah, it's not in the Bible. It's of the devil. The people that celebrate Christmas, they worship Satan. Okay? Read that thing. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1. Great. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as, as have afflicted him. Great. And with no account of his labors. Meaning what? They don't take you seriously. You understand? Then it says, then it says, it says the righteous man will stand in great boldness. You understand? But the people that know you, they're not going to make account of your labors because you grew up before them. You understand? That's why when we go out, the people, when they say, whoa, whoa, praise to the Most High, he says, blessed is he that cometh in the, in the name of the Lord. But among our brothers and sisters that we grew up with, they don't say nothing like that. You understand? Go ahead. When they see it, they shall be troubled with, trem with terrible fear. With terrible fear. Okay? He says, when they see it, when they see you being numbered among the prophets, you understand? He says, they are going to be troubled with terrible fear. Go ahead. And they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Great. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Come on. So far beyond all they that look for. He says, so far beyond all they that look for. You understand? Now, what is he saying? He says, they are going to be what? They are going to be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Because we look strange. We wear fringes. Sisters be wearing long dresses with fringes on. You don't celebrate Christmas. You don't celebrate New Year. You understand? You talk about the Passover. You talk about the Feast of Dedication, the destruction of Nicana. That's what you're talking about. You talk about keeping the Sabbath day. You don't eat pork, shrimp, lobster, crab, none of that. You're strange to them. You understand? You look strange. Okay, Ray. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, shall they stay within themselves. This was he whom we had in sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. And a what? And a proverb of reproach. A proverb of reproach, meaning they will speak evil of you. You understand? Or oh, you think you are a prophet now. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to bring us, you're going to tell us what to do. You're going to hear about this Bible. You're always in that Bible, Negro. You know, he, 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 this guy, he cannot have any normal conversation. Whenever you talk about, we talk to him, he always go to the scriptures. He tell you, no, but actually, you know what's happening in the world is written in the script. They don't want to hear none of that. That's why it says, you will be a proverb of reproach unto them. Okay, go ahead. We fools accounted his life madness mm -hmm. and his end to be without honor. Because that's how they look at it. They think your end will be without honor. But they don't understand. This is the spirit, okay? The spirit of the Lord, when it jumps on you and you prophesy, you'll be turned into another man. They're not going to recognize you. Go ahead. How is he numbered among the children of God mm. and his lot among the saints? Is he also among the prophets? Is the son of Kish also numbered among the prophets? Because that's what's going on here. That's what we just read in 1 Samuel 10. Go ahead. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth mm. and the life? Come on. And the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. And what they did not receive it because they didn't believe it when it was being brought out by the prophets. Go back to verse Samuel 10, verse 11 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verses 11. Read. 
And it came to pass when all that knew him four times saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Is Saul also among the saints? Is he also numbered among the saints? Go ahead. And one and one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore, it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? That's the proverb. He said, Therefore, it became a proverb. It became a proverb of reproach. Is Saul also among the prophets? Because they don't believe. That's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5. You understand? In verse 5, verse 3, when it says, and a proverb of reproach. What does the proverb of reproach? Read verse 12 again. First book of Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. Right. And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore, it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? That's the proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? Is he numbered among the saints? You understand? That's the proverb. That's the same thing they say about us this day. You understand? He thinks he's a prophet. You understand? That's why when we were teaching in Tatle Hong, that black ashy Jezebel woman, she said, "We, because she asked, so who are you? Hmm? Who are you? I was like, listen, sis, we're the prophets of the Lord back on this earth. You understand? She's like, ah. She was just groaning. You understand? Because guess what? That behavior, everything that she was doing and saying is based on, it's written. So it was not a new thing. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 16 now. First Samuel 10, verse 16. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 16. Go ahead. And Saul said unto his uncle, he told us plainly that the asses were found, but of the matter of the kingdom, whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. You see what's going on? You, listen, I need you men to pay attention, especially you men. You see what's going on here? Saul, the spirit of the Lord jumped, came upon Saul. He became into another man. He started to prophesy. Do you understand? Guess what? Once the spirit of the Lord jumps on you, guess what? What's going to be in your mind is the matters regarding the kingdom. That's what's going to be in your mind. The kingdom. Rulership of all nations on earth. That's what's going to be in your mind. You understand? Living forever. Okay? Conquering and ruling these nations. That's what's going to be in your mind. Do you understand? Read again verse 16. So we understand what's coming out here. Okay, come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verse 16. Great. And Saul said unto his uncle, he told us plainly that the asses were found. Great. But of the matter of the kingdom, whereof Samuel spake, he told them not. He said, because the uncle was asking him what Samuel said unto him. So he's explaining, he said, listen, he told us plainly that the asses were found. You understand? Because it was prophesied in 1 Samuel 9. Now here it says, but of the matter of the kingdom where of Samuel spake, he says he told him not. He didn't say nothing. Why? Because they were not going to believe him anyway. You understand? Watch this. Get that in 2 Genesis 2 verse 35. Once the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, the mindset is about, is about what? Kingdom. It's about building the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the spirit you have to have. That's the spirit you must have once the spirit of the Lord jumps on you. You cannot be distracted by the coochie. You cannot be distracted by big booty women. You cannot be distracted by anything. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, none of that stuff. The mindset must be upon the kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon this earth. I need you men to understand that thing. Okay, 2nd Ezra 2 verse 35. Read that. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 2 verse 35. Go ahead. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. You see that thing? You are going to be ready for the what? For the, you're going to be ready to the reward of the kingdom. You're going to get yourself ready for the reward of the kingdom when the kingdom comes. Because we are ushering in the kingdom. So once the spirit of the Lord jumps on you, the Lord calls you into this truth, that's what your mindset is supposed to be. Your mindset is not supposed to be on a rod. I'm talking to the sisters now. Your mindset cannot be, I want a new rod. What the hell is this? Your mindset must be, I need to help, I need to help support the troops. You understand? 
It must not be supposed, no, I need to get a new rod. Mm -mm, no. The same as you, brothers. Your mindset cannot be, I need a coochie. I cannot hold myself. Stay in the spirit, Negro. Read again, verse 35. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 2, verse 35. Read. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. You see that thing? For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. That's your mindset right there. Okay? Give me that in Luke. Okay? Give me Luke 9. Okay? This is the mindset. Luke chapter 9 and verse 22. Watch this. Hmm. You know what? Luke 17. Not Luke 9. Luke 17 verse 20. Okay, watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 20. Great. And he was demanded of the Pharisees when and the kingdom when, of God... And when, and when, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees. Come on, pay attention. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. And Great. when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God will not come with observation. It's not going to fall on your lap. It, that's not going to happen. We must labor to receive the kingdom. We must make ourselves ready to receive the reward of the kingdom. That means we must labor in the Mosaic God's vineyard. Go ahead. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Because the spirit of the Lord, when it comes upon you, your mindset is going to be on the kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon the earth. You're going to be taught. You're going to understand the things that you are being taught. You will apply. You'll start to see what the mission is about. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's what Saul is explaining here. That's why he didn't, he didn't make this known to his uncle. Go back to 1 Samuel 10 now. 1 Samuel chapter 10, read verse 25 now. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verses 25. Go ahead. And Samuel told the people, the men of the kingdom, mm -hmm. and wrote it in a book. Right. And laid, and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel said unto, and Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. You see what, you see what Samuel did? It says, he told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book. You understand? He wrote it down and laid it before the Lord and Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. Watch this next verse. Go ahead. And so also went, went home to Kibir. And there went with him a band of men whose mm. hearts God had touched. You see that thing? The reason why you men are up in here is because the, the, your mind, the most that God has touched your mind to be up in here. I didn't call nobody up in here. The Lord did. The Lord touched your mind. That's why it says, whose heart God has touched. Go ahead. But the children of Belial said, how shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought mm. him no present. But he held his peace. You see that thing? They hated, they hated the fact that the spirit of the Lord has jumped on this brother. They hated that thing. That's the same thing that is happening with our people today. They have the same mindset. They begin to despise you because whenever you speak, they always find it offensive. You become an offense unto them when what you do and what you say, how you dress, what, which the high holidays of the law that you observe, the dietary law that you keep, the moral and the civil laws that you apply. They start to hate you for that thing. You understand? Because our people, they love evil. Watch this. First Samuel 11 verse 6 now. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 6. Once the spirit of the Lord jumps upon you, guess what? You're going to be thinking about the kingdom building the 12 tribes of Israel, and you're going to be, you're going to be thinking about what? Defending your nation. You, you understand? You're going to have to think about the welfare of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the mindset. Not on the coochie. Okay? Read that. 1 Samuel 11, verse 6. Read. First book of Samuel chapter 11, verse 6. Go ahead. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. You see, the Spirit of the Lord, he says, the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, meaning he had the news. 
What was the news? Jump up to verse 2. I'm going to show you that when this, the right spirit of the Lord is in you, the Lord will begin to open your spiritual eyes to see the atrocities that our people are going through. And that thing right there is going to make you mad. Read what you got. Verse 2. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 2. Read. And Nahash the Amorite answered them on the this Amorite. condition. Not the Amorite. Come on. Stay focused. Read verse 2 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 2. Excuse me. Sir. Read. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them on this condition will I make a covenant with you. Read. That I may thrust out all your right eyes and laid for a reproach upon Israel. So now this Ammonite, okay, this Ammonite was threatening Israel. You understand? This Japanese, this Japanese fled, that this Japanese fled back. He was, he was threatening Israel. He said, listen, Ammonite, he says that, he says that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. So jump down to verse six. When this news came out, the spirit of God jumped upon Saul. Read that. Watch this. Verse 6. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 6. Go ahead. And the spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. His anger was kindled greatly. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord jumped upon him. You understand? To why? Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7, verse 7. Because this is what happened upon Saul. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Read. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Oppression maketh a wise man mad. Because Saul, he saw the oppression of his people because the spirit of the Lord was still dealing with Saul at that point. Was still dealing, well, I'm dealing with the, the, the time when the spirit of the Lord was still dealing with Saul. So don't get it twisted. Okay, read verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely, read. Make it a wise man mad. Read. And a gift destroyeth the heart. So oppression makes a wise man mad. Give me Ecclesiastes 5, verse 8 now. Okay, because this is when Saul was still in his right mind because the spirit of the Lord was still dealing with Saul, guiding him, you understand? Helping him, helping him to see the oppression of his people and responding accordingly according to as it is written, according to the spirit of the Lord that will be guiding him, okay? Read that, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 8. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead. If thou seest the oppression of the poor, Mm -hmm. and violent perverting of judgment and that's justice. What the, that's what the Ammonite was doing. That Ammonite, he was doing what? He was violently perverting judgment and threatening us. Go ahead. Marvel not at the, at the matter. Mm. For he that is higher than the highest recorder. Read. For he that is higher than the highest recorder and they be higher than they. That's talk about the most said God. Now he's saying, listen, when you see oppression of the poor and violent perverting of, just, of judgment and justice in a province, it says, marvel not at the matter. I Meaning, don't just sit there and do nothing. You understand? Don't sit there and your mind is on coochie, your mind is on a new rod. Mm -mm. You are not in the spirit of the Lord at this point. You understand? Your mind is on the world. You understand? You are being influenced by Instagram and, and what? You, because why? You're dealing with the spirit of lust. Your mind is not correct, okay? Read what you got. Watch this. Now give me 1 Samuel 11, verse 11. Okay, read it. First book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 11. Read. And it was so, and it was so on the morrow that mm -hmm. Saul put the people in three companies. Read. And they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. Mm. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered so that Come two on. of them were not left together. Because he was slaughtering them. Because the spirit of the Lord was upon him to do that which is lawful and right. 
he executed true judgment. Go ahead. And the people said unto Saul, who is he that said, shall Saul reign of us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. Go ahead. And Saul said, there shall not a man be put to death this day. For today, the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. You see that thing? When the spirit of the Lord jumps upon you, what's going to be in your mind is salvation. Deliverance for your people. You're not going to care about the other nations because there are the other nations, they are in their kingdom already. So you're not going to want to save master. You're not going to want to save the other nations that are oppressing us. Mm -mm. You're going to think about salvation for your people and your people alone. That's when the right spirit of the Lord is upon you. You understand? Our people have no, they don't have the Holy Spirit. That's why they still want to, they want to bring the other nations into our kingdom. The Holy Spirit is not upon them. The spirit of the Lord has not jumped on them yet. They still have the spirit of Satan. Okay, read on. Then said Samuel to the people, come and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. You see that thing? So because that's where their mindset was, the kingdom. Deliverance, salvation. You understand? Good news for the people of Israel. Our people that are, that are what that are trodden underfoot by these nations. That's when he had, they still had the right spirit in him. Watch this. Now, give me first Samuel. Okay, give me first Samuel 15, verse 1. Now, watch this because they, when the spirit of the Lord is rolling with you, guess what? You're gonna do the things according to as it is written in this book. You understand? When the spirit of the Lord is not rolling with you, you are given counsel, you don't follow it. Guess what? You've got the spirit of the devil on you. You have to repent that the Lord put a, re a renew, a right spirit within. You understand? Watch this. Get that in 1 Samuel 15 verse 1. Now, this is the beginning when Saul, the spirit of the Lord starts to leave Saul. You understand? Watch this. 1 Samuel 15 verse 1. 1 Samuel 15 verse 1. Go ahead. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Read. Lord sent to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. He says, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. The voice of the, of the words of the Lord is this Bible. You understand? He says, listen to the spirit of the Lord. That's what Samuel is telling Saul. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. Mm. How they wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. You see that thing? When we came out of Egypt, Amalek, which is the so-called Jews, the Jewish people in our land today, that's Amalek in our land, that were put in our land in 1948 by the British government, by the Zionist Federation. Okay, read that again. Verse 2. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. So now the Lord is reminding Saul of what happened in the past. So now it's time for vengeance. Okay, go ahead. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy that, that the first book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and mm. spare them not. Come on. But slay both man and woman infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. You see, this is the instruction now. Remember verse 1, it says, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Verse 3, that's what he's supposed to hearken unto, and that's what he's supposed to execute based on that instruction. He was given a simple instruction. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 8 now. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 8. Read. But Paul and the people spread no, no. a cup. Verse 8, verse 8. Come on, verse 8. Excuse me. Yes, sir. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Am Amalekites, alive. Read. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. You see what Saul did? He didn't listen to the instruction that he was given. 
It says, and he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. The law says, listen, kill everyone. Excuse me, and kill everything that they have. He said, no, I'm going to spare Agag, the Amalekite, the king. Okay, read. But so, and the people spared Agag, and mm. the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and of read. the lambs, and all that was good. And would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, and refused that they destroyed utterly. You see what they did? So they had the spirit of covetousness because he spared Agag, the king of the Amalekites, one, two, he spared the best of the oxen and the sheep and the goats and so forth. He wasn't supposed to do that because that was not the instruction. He was self willed. That was Saul's problem. He was self-willed. You understand? He wanted to do his own thing. Okay, watch this. Keep reading. Verse 10. Then came the word of, of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, Read. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Stop right there. The Lord, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. It says, it repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. The word repented in this context, the Lord says, he hates and regrets. He says he hates, he regrets the fact that he set up Saul to be king. Don't make the most High God regret bringing you into this truth. You understand? Don't make the most High God regret bringing you into this truth. Because some of you, you're still very disrespectful, some of you. Some of you, you hate correction. Some of you, you hate instruction. Some of you, you like to do your own thing. You are given an instruction, you add spices on top of it. You, the devil, you understand? And you're not going to last in this truth if you don't repent from that demon that you are carrying around, worshipping. Each time when you're given instruction, you feed it with rebellion and witchcraft. Understand that thing. Read again, verse 11. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 11. Read. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Read. For he is turned back from following me. Meaning what? He, hold on. He decided to do his own thing. He says what? He turned back from following me. He decided to follow Satan. Go ahead. And hath not performed my commandments. Mm. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. You see that thing? He prayed unto the Lord all night because of this thing. You understand? Because this Samuel was the prophet and Samuel understood the consequences of Saul's action. You understand? And at this point, the Lord says, I regret because the people are the ones that demanded that a, a man be set up as king over them. The people demanded for Saul. You understand? Watch this. Now, jump down to verse 13 now. Okay? First Samuel 15 verse 13. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 13. Great. And so, and Samuel came to Saul. Mm. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Just think about this thing. So, Saul did not perform the commandment of the Lord. He didn't. But now he's bearing false witness. He's breaking the commandment. Do you understand? Read again, verse 13. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 13. And, and Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. You see that thing? He's not even seeing anything wrong with what he's done. It says what? It says, and Samuel came to Saul and said, said and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. You, can, you really have to imagine this thing and visualize. You know, you're seeing it with pride. Knowing very well he didn't follow the commandments. He didn't do all that he was commanded of doing. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 20. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 20. Ray. And so said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Mm -hmm. And have brought Agag, the king of, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. You see, he's even contradicting himself in what he's saying. You see that verse right there? It says, and have gone the 
way which I go on the way which the Lord has sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Who told him to do that? Nobody. Nobody instructed Saul to do this thing, but he did it anyway. Such as some of you. I can go back to the Feast of Dedication, some evil Negroes that I saw. What the hell is this? That spirit, right? That's the spirit of Saul right there. Being self, self-willed Negroes. Okay? Look at the consequences. I'm going to show you what happens. Because some of you think this is a game. No, no, this is not a game. You understand? This is a matter of life and death. Read again. Okay? Verse 20 again. Read it. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 20. And Read. Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have mm -hmm. brought a whom, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Go ahead, verse 21, read. But the people took off the spoil, sheep mm. and the oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, read. to sacrifice to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. You see that thing right there? It says, you see what he's doing? Not only is he take, he doesn't take responsibility, number one. Number two, he's blaming the people for taking the best sheep, the oxen, and so on and so forth. You understand? But listen to what Samuel said. He, jump up to verse 19. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Read verse 19. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Read. Wherefore, then didst not, wherefore, then did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and did mm. evil in the sight of the Lord, Says, but you flew, you, you fled upon the spoil, meaning what? You took the spoils. Samuel is telling Saul here. He's talking to Saul. He says, you did it. You did this thing. You understand? You did fly upon the spoil because he was covetous. He had a covetous spirit and he had a self full spirit too. Okay? Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 21. First book of Samuel, 15 verse 21. But the mm -hmm. people took off the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. The Lord didn't command Saul to do none of those things, but he did it anyway. Now watch this. Watch what happens. Remember, the spirit of the Lord came upon them, and the people was like, whoa, Saul is also numbered among the saints. He's numbered among the prophets. Hmm? All praises to the Most High. Such is some of you. Now watch this. Now chapter 16, verse 14. Let me show you, because of what Saul did, here's what the Lord did. Watch this. Verse, verse 14. 1 Samuel 16, 14. Read that. First book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 14. Go ahead. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Stop right there. And an evil spirit. Oh, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait. Is says the spirit of the Lord did what? Departed from Saul. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. The spirit, the Holy Spirit left Saul. You understand? The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Go ahead. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Go and ahead. an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You see what happens when the Holy Spirit leaves? The evil spirit from the Lord is the one that jumps on you. Do you understand? That's what happens when you decide to do what Saul did. Because it's simple, following instruction. He didn't want to do that. He was dealing with the spirit of rebellion. Some of you have talked to you about that thing. That spirit of rebellion. Read it, actually. Let me put the spirit out there. First Samuel 15, 23. Read it. First book of Samuel, chapter 15. Verses 23. Go ahead. And some will say, Had the Lord no, no. had great delight in burning. No, no. Come on. You're messing me up, bro. Verse, 15, verse 23. Come on. First Samuel 15, 23. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You see that? Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So if you rebellious, you are the same as you are same as somebody that is practicing uh, necromancy, somebody that is using divination, somebody that is using voodoo, somebody that is um, 
you know, um, you know, stargazing and worshiping the sun, moon, and stars, you are exactly the same. No difference. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Rebellion is witchcraft. You understand? Because what does that mean? That means that you are bewitched. Get that in Wisdom of Solomon. Let me show you what it means when it says, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4. We're going to read verse 12. I'm going to show you when it says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. What does that mean? Read it. Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 12. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. For the bewitching of naughtiness that obscure things that are honest. Stop right there. The bewitching of naughtiness, the witchcraft of sin, because sin is witchcraft. Rebellion is sin, which is witchcraft. You are bewitched by your naughtiness. You are bewitched by your sin. The idol that you worship called rebellion. You have to imagine what what the, if you have to visualize the demon called rebellion, what would it look like? What would that demon look like if you have to visualize it? It's some ugly ass thing. Excuse my French, but that's what it would look like. It will have maybe four heads, you understand? It's shapeless and all of that. Yes, something like that. You understand? A monster that you feed him on a daily basis, you understand? Because some of you still don't believe it. Till this day, you still don't believe what's coming out. You understand? Oh no, not me, not me. That's the mindset. Okay, read again. Wisdom of Solomon four verse twelve. Wisdom of Solomon chapter four verse twelve. Go ahead. For the bewitching of naughtiness that obscure things that are honest. The things that are honest is the laws of God. The laws of God are honest. They are pure. They are true. Read. And the wandering of concupiscence. That undermine the simple mind. It weakens the simple mind because you are simple-minded. That the, the spirit of rebellion is the is 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 the mindset is a simple-mindedness of it means you have a simple mind, you are dumb. You understand? You have no sense. That's why it says it will undermine the simple mind. It will destroy a mind that is simple, the bewitching of sin. Okay, that's what he's explaining right there. Go back to First Samuel, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-three again. First Book of Samuel, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-three. Wait. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, mm -hmm. and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You see that thing? And stubbornness, because that rebellion is stubbornness. Okay, is letting you know rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, the bewitching of naughtiness. You are bewitched by your own sense. You think, you still think, no, I'm still in the spirit. No, you're not in the spirit. It says, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So when you're stubborn, you are an idolater. You're, you're breaking the first commandment. Go ahead. Because thou was rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Because that now goes into us. You understand? King of kings. We're going to be with the kings, he's talking about. So, guess what? Rebellion, stubbornness. Once you have those things, you, have, you are rejecting the laws of God. That's what you're doing. The minute you have those spirits, rebellion and stubbornness, you are reject, you rejected, not rejecting, you have rejected past tense. You have rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected thee from being king. The Lord will reject you too. Understand that. The Most High doesn't have to, to use any of us. I mean, yeah, he can raise up stones in our place. That's what the scripture says. But some of you Negroes, you, some of you, you are still in that Negro mindset. You are not an Israelite yet. You are still in that Negro mindset. You are yet to repent. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me wisdom of Solomon. Okay. You know what? Give me Genesis 6, verse 3. Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3. Let's read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3. Go ahead. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. My what? My spirit shall not always strive with man. My spirit, my spirit. The same spirit that jumped upon Saul. The same spirit that left Saul when he, when he was rebellious. 
You understand? Go ahead. For that he also is flesh. He is sinful. Flesh means sinful. Go ahead. Yet his days shall be 112 and 20 years. I mean, the Lord says, I'm going to shorten your lifespan now. Jump down to verse 5. The reason why the Spirit of the Lord says he's not going to dwell with you anymore is because of what? Read verse 5. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 5. Go ahead. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. See that? The wickedness of man. The wickedness of man. Of man. So once the wickedness enters into you, the Spirit of the Lord will not dwell in you. The Spirit of the Lord and the wickedness of the world cannot dwell in the same space together. No. Impossible. That's why it's called the Holy Spirit. It's separate. It cannot be mixed with anything, any evil, any filthiness, any wickedness. Okay? Read again, verse 5. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 5. And God Go saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Come on. And that every imagination of the thoughts in his heart was only evil continually. See that thing right there? That's what happened to Saul. You understand? Because he had a what he had a malicious mindset. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 3. We're still dealing with 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. Don't lose the thought now. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 3. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Go ahead. For throw thoughts separate from God. Throw what thoughts? And Evil thoughts. Rebellious and stubborn thoughts, they separate from the Lord. You understand? The Spirit of the Lord will not strive with you. Go ahead. And his power, when it is tried, will prove with the unwise. That's exactly what happened to Saul. He was the unwise. He was unwise at that point. You understand? He, was not, he did not keep the laws of the Mosai. He rejected God's commandments. He says, when it is tried, reprove it the unwise. When you get tried, when instruction is given to you, now the trial is, will you follow the instruction as it is given to you, or you're going to add spices and, uh, and, and salts to it? That's the question. Watch this. Get that in Deuteronomy, okay? Get Deuteronomy chapter 17. Get Deuteronomy 17, start at verse 9. Okay, Deuteronomy 17, verse 9. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 9. Go ahead. And thou shalt come unto the priests of the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, Stop and right require. Hold on, I'm going to show you. You see the Mosai? The Mosai is a genius. He's more than a genius. But I want to show you how heavy the Lord is. You see that verse right there? This verse, the way it's written, is written for those wicked Negroes that are always trying to find loopholes. Read the verse again. I'm going to show you something about this verse. Read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites. Stop right there. And because, hold on, wait. It says, thou shalt come unto the priest, the Levites. So a senseless Negro will think, hold on, but you're not from the tribe of Levi. The temple is no longer standing. You understand? The Levites are no longer, the Levites are no longer the high priest. Christ is only binning, only God can judge me. You're not going to tell me nothing. Watch the next part of that verse. Now we've already destroyed that, right? Watch the next part of that verse. Because the Levites are no longer the high priests. You understand? Watch this next verse, next part of that verse. Go ahead. And unto the judge that shall be in those days. Stop right there. And unto the judge that shall be in those days. You see how the, the Mosa is a genius. He knows the mind of the Negro. Because the Negro always trying to find loopholes and excuses. And say, but I say Levite. Mm, he says, and what? And unto the judge that shall be in those days. You see that thing? Because the Mosai knows. Get to Deuteronomy 16, verse 18. Watch this. I'm gonna, the Mosai is heavy, okay? He knows the mind of the Negro. Read that. Deuteronomy 16, verse 18. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 18. Mm. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. Go ahead. The Lord thy God giveth thee 
throughout thy tribes mm. and they shall judge the people with just judgment so these judges and officers will judge the people with just judgment you see that thing this is making reference to what us in these last days as we are organizing ourselves in the spirit of christ that military that is prophesied in ezekiel 37 okay so go back to Deuteronomy 17 now verse 9 again the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verses 9. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days. You see that thing? And the in, judges, hold on, the judges and officers that you're going to find at the gates. Okay, read on. And inquire. Mm. And they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. They're going to show you the sentence of judgment. They're going to instruct you out of the scriptures what to do. Next part, next verse. Go ahead. And thou shalt do according to the sentence mm. which, they shall, which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. That thing is says, thou shalt do according to the sentence, meaning the judgment, the counsel that you was given. Okay, it says, shall choose. It says, the Lord that God shall choose, uh, shall show thee. It says, thou shalt observe according to all that they inform thee. You, you see, a lot of you, you given, you come, you, you see, I mentioned this before, I'm gonna mention it again. A lot of you, you come for counsel, right? You come for counsel. No problem. You come for counsel, you are given the counsel. Then when it's time to execute the counsel, you execute 80% of the counsel and the rest, you do your own thing. So when things go wrong, because they will, I give you think you slick. You read the scriptures, but you just ignore what they say. So things go wrong, not if or maybe, when things go wrong. You know what, you know what you're going to do? you're going to blame leadership for it because now you're going to say, no, but I came to you. No, no, but yes, you came. But did you follow the counsel exactly as you were given? No, you didn't. So now it's backfiring on you because it will. It's not a matter of if or maybe. It's a matter of when it does. Because yes, says, thou shalt do according to all that they informed thee. Isn't that the same thing that was given to Saul? Saul was told, listen, slaughter everybody of the Amalekites. He spared the king and the best of the sheep and the oxen. And he still said, no, but I followed the instruction. No, you didn't. You did not. You understand? You didn't do it. It doesn't matter if you follow 80% of the instruction and then 20% you add your own spices. Did you follow the council? Yes or no? No, you did not follow the council. That's what I need you men, particularly you brothers, I need you to understand that thing. Because for some of you, you still what? You still, you're still wearing nappies, okay? Yeah. Some of you, you are still wearing nappies. You think you are grown. Mm -mm. You're still wearing nappies. As if there's a nappy involved on a child, that means that child must be changed. That child must be washed and fed, must be rocked to sleep. That's why Christ says you must be born again. You must be like a child. Some of you think you are grown. When things backfire because they will, guess what? Everybody that you connected to, they are also going to receive the judgment. You wicked Negro, you. Read again, verse 9. Verse 10. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 10. Go ahead. And thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they to all that they inform thee. Next verse. Go ahead. According to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, mm. and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, and thou Read. shalt do. Thou shalt do. You must do it. Go ahead. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the mm. right hand, nor to the left that thing is very clear it's very plain english but guess what the wicked negro who thinks they know too much guess what they will do 
excuse me, they will add their own spices. They will ignore the scriptures. Written right there in black and white. You understand that? Read on. Verse 12. And the man that will do presumptuously. Mm. Presumptuously meaning what? Self-willed. Self-willed. They don't give a damn about what the Bible says. Go ahead. And will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God mm. or unto the judge even that man shall die. Hold on a second. Is this that man or that woman is going to drop dead? I didn't write this thing. It's what before my time. It says, even that man shall die. You're going to die. The Lord will send the death angel to take you out. Zoro. They always, they never miss. You understand? There's spirits that are created for vengeance. That means you want that. You want to feel the wrath of the Lord through the spirits that are created for vengeance. Hmm? You cannot make it up. Yeah, keep going. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. You see that thing? So we're going to bring it out so you repair, venture you repent. If you don't, the Lord will put evil out of Israel. And we will too, as it is written. So I need you men and you sisters to understand this thing. When you are given instruction and counsel, when you come for counsel, you better follow the counsel the way it was given to you. Don't add your own things to it. Because if you do, we're going to have problems. And when the problem comes, guess where you're going to go? You're going to come back and say, no, I'm having problems such and such. Me, I'm just going to sit there and just look at you and say, you telling me that you surprised when these things are happening to you? Why are you surprised for? You were given the counsel. You decided to do your own thing. Now the Lord is saying, okay, I agree you like to play. No problem. So some of you, you can avoid a lot of problems and heartache in your life. But because you think you've grown, you're acting like a black, ashy Negro, just blowing smoke all over the place. Okay? Now watch this. Now go back to 1 Samuel 16. You know what? No, 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 no. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 3 because that's where we were. Let's go back there. Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 3. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 3. Go ahead. For four thoughts separate from God mm. and his power. When, Go ahead. when it is tried, reproved. When it is tried, reprove the unwise. Because the unwise is going to be reproved. The unwise will be reproved. Do you understand? Next verse. Go ahead. For in them. Come on. For, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. You see that the spirit of the Lord will not enter into a malicious soul. A soul that deals with malicious intent. Go ahead. No dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. And in the body that gives them, you give yourself to sin. Wisdom of the Lord will not enter into your body, into your temple. Go ahead. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Stop right there. This whole time, from the first Samuel chapter 10, first Samuel chapter 9, verse 27, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. You understand? The Holy Spirit, which is the wisdom of the Lord. This whole time, we've been, that's been the subject matter. The Holy Spirit. Read verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. You will flee malicious in a, a soul, you understand, a, a soul that has malicious intent. The Holy Spirit of discipline, because discipline is a spirit. Discipline is a spirit. You understand? That's why it says, because the Holy Spirit of discipline will, is not if or maybe, no, it's a fact, will flee deceit. If there's any type of deceit, the Holy Spirit of the Lord will leave and depart. Go ahead. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And the Holy Spirit is going to remove, the Spirit of the Lord will remove from your thoughts that are without understanding. Because how do we get understanding of the scriptures? Okay, get that in um, Sarah 21. Okay, Sarah 21, verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 11. Go ahead. He that keepeth the law of the Lord 
get at the understanding thereof. Come on. That the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. So if you keep God's commandments, you're going to receive understanding. That's the only way. There's no any way around that. Because you, be, you are instructed out of God's laws. When you go against the instruction, which is God's commandments, guess what? You're not going to have understanding. And the Holy Spirit will flee your thought process, will flee your thoughts because your thoughts are without understanding. They are without that discipline because discipline is a spirit. You understand? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit mm. and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Come on. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. You see that thing? The Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of the Lord, the word of God, it says is going to depart, will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. What is unrighteousness? Sin. When sin comes into your spirit, the Holy Spirit will leave. Because the Holy Spirit and your sin cannot exist in the same place. That's what you brothers and sisters don't understand. The Holy Spirit of the Lord cannot exist where sin is, when sin is present. Because it's called a Holy Spirit. You understand? Understand that thing. Give me the book of Baruch 4, okay? Not Baruch, Sirach 4, verse 17. Watch this. Sirach chapter 4, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, verse 17. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. She is wisdom. It says, wisdom will walk with you by crooked ways. Meaning the Lord will make sure that the Lord will not reveal that Holy Spirit unto you until you get your mind right, until the Lord sees how serious you are. Right? And bring fear and dread upon you. The fear and the dread is the discipline that the, the, law, the laws of God will bring upon you. It says bring fear because that's the first thing that you must do. Fear the Lord so the Holy Spirit may dwell within you. Go ahead. And torment him with a discipline. We see that thing? The wisdom of the Lord will torment you with her discipline because discipline is a spirit of the Lord. Go ahead. Until she may trust his soul. Until she may trust his soul. Hold on. That takes time. For the wisdom of the Lord to trust your soul, listen, that takes time. It's not a two-year thing. No. It's not a three-year program. Mm -mm. The wisdom of the Lord will take time to trust your soul because we're filled with wickedness. Okay, come on. And try him by her laws. That's how you're going to be what? That's how you're going to torment you with her discipline. What is the discipline? The laws of God. That's the discipline. Go ahead. Verse 18. Read. Then will she return the straight way unto him. Mm -hmm. And comfort him and show him her secrets. That's when the spirit of the Lord trusts you now at that point. That takes years. Go ahead. Verse 19. Read. But if he go wrong, if you she... sin, if you are body, if your mind and your body is subject to sin, what's going to happen? Read. She will forsake him. The spirit of the Lord will, re will leave you, will depart from you. And the spirit, the evil spirit from God will jump on you. You understand? Go ahead. And give him over to his own ruin. And give you over to your own destruction. Because they that hate me love death. That's Proverbs 8.36. You understand? That's what we're reading here. And that's what happened to Saul. Okay? Now go back to First Samuel. First Samuel 10. I mean, First Samuel 16 verse 14. First book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 14. Great. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You see that thing? An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. What does that mean? Give me the book of Luke real quick, okay? Give me Luke. Luke 22 and verse 3. Luke 22, verse 3. 
Here's an example with Judas Iscariot. Okay, watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 3. Read. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot, mm. being of the number of the 12. You see that? It says, then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. You see that thing? So the spirit, the evil spirit from the Lord, that's Satan. The evil spirit from the Lord, that's the spirit of Satan. So go back to 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. That's what entered into Judas Iscariot. That's what they said. That's the same thing that happened to Saul. Okay, read that. 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. First book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 14. Go ahead. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm. and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You see that thing? The evil spirit from the Lord troubled Saul. Read on. Watch this. Verse 15. Go ahead. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold mm. now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Because they could see it. They could see your Saul has the devil on him. You understand? They could tell. This guy has the devil on him now. They could tell. That's what he's saying right there. He says, And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Because letting you know what is also letting you know that our forefathers, they knew when the devil jumps on you. They knew, they could tell. You understand? They knew, they had that wisdom and understanding. Today, because we are so destroyed, we can't tell that until we come into this truth. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me the book of, give me First Samuel now. Give me First Samuel. Uh, I want to go back. First Samuel 15 verse 23. Watch what the Lord does now. When the spirit of evil spirit jumped on Saul, guess what? He had he developed the spirit of hatred towards King David because he was the next in line to be the king. Okay. Watch this. Get that in First Samuel fifteen, First um, Samuel fifteen, verse twenty-three. First book of Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty-three. Go ahead. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Not, oh, yeah, yeah, keep and, going. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Now read the next verse. Read verse 24. Watch this, because verse 23, we went over this, we explained it. Now read the next verse. Go ahead. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 24. And Saul so said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because mm. I feared the people. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Read that verse again. Verse 24. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 24. Go ahead. And Saul so said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Hold on. You, you see what happened? Read verse 24 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verses 24. Go ahead. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, mm. for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and mm. thy word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You see what he's saying? So be, remember, now Saul wants to get, he wants to apologize. But this whole time, he's been making excuses the whole time. So what is that going into? That goes into when you are corrected, you make excuses. You don't take correction and all that. Guess what? The most like God, when it's time for you to say, I want to get myself right, the Lord said, no, 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 not yet. I'm going to punish you first. Then when I'm satisfied, then I'll allow you. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. The most of God was just, he was, he was just upset with Saul. Okay. And Saul still didn't see his wrong because he's blaming the people. He says, because I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You see that? 
The Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear. So what is he talking about? Go ahead. Come now, on. therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, mm -hmm. and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. So now he's asking for pardon for his sins. Watch this, you know, verse 26. First book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 26. Come on. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. You see that thing? When you reject God's commandments, the Lord will also reject you. But the Lord is not going to come down here. The Lord will use the judges that he set up to give you what he said. Your job is to take what is coming out at the mouth of the prophets by the most High like God and apply it. That's, that's the job. You understand? Ray? And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon his skirt of his mantle and mm. drained. So what happened was that when, so, when Samuel was leaving, Saul, he took hold of, of, of Samuel's garment. You understand? The cape. And it tear in two because he was holding on to it as Samuel was leaving. And the, Samuel's mantle is where it says it rent, meaning it teared apart. Go ahead. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, mm. and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. That's cold right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. So we can't play with the Mosai. We must be serious in this truth. We must have the spirit of gravity. Like we're going over on Tuesday. You understand? It says, and he says, and give it to a neighbor of thine that is better than you. Mm. That's some heavy stuff. So we must humble ourselves before the Lord. Understand that thing. Don't think you're the best thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. Don't do that. When you are given something to do, don't be trancing me and wanting to act like a jukebox. No, don't be doing that. That's the spirit of Satan. You understand? Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Read that. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 17, verses 22. No, 13. One, three. Acts chapter 13. Verse 22. Read Excuse that. me, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 22. Go ahead. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. Ray. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall Ray. fulfill all my will. We shall what? Which shall fulfill all my will. We shall fulfill all, all, all my will. Remember, Saul did not fulfill all the will of the Father. He didn't do that. He didn't slaughter all the Amalekites. He slaughtered most of them and he spared Agag. He spared the best sheep. So he didn't fulfill all the will of the Father. He went to the left. And he went to the right. He decided to add some spices to the instruction he was given. You understand? That's why he says he will fulfill all my will. You see that thing right there? Give me Sirach 47 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 47 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 1. Go ahead. And after him rose up Nathan to, be, to prophesy in the time of David. After him, the him is Samuel. The him is the prophet Samuel that died. After him, the Lord rose up another prophet in Israel. You understand? To prophesy unto the king that will be set up. That prophet was Nathan. Okay, read verse 1 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 1. Where and after him rose up Nathan to prophesy in the time of David. Come on. As is the fat taken away 
from the peace offering. So was David chosen out of the children of Israel. So because he was what? He was going to be that righteous sacrifice to Israel. Go ahead. He played with lions as with kids mm. and with bears as with lambs. Meaning he was a mighty man. Go ahead. Slew he not a giant when he was yet but young and he did not take away reproach from the people when he lifted up his hand with the stone in the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath. You can read about that in First Samuel chapter 17. Go ahead. For he called upon the Most High Lord hmm. and gave him strength in the right hand to slay that mighty warrior and set up the horn of his people. And set up the horn of his people, meaning a leader in Israel. Go ahead. So the people honored him with ten thousands and praised him in the blessings of the Lord in that he gave him a crown of glory. You see that thing? Remember that song that the women were singing? And the evil spirit jumped upon Saul. He says, David, uh, Saul has slain his thousands, and David has slain his ten thousand. You understand? Saul became mad as he was jealous. Okay, go ahead. For he destroyed the enemies on every side mm -hmm. and brought to note the Philistines, his adversities. Go ahead. Break their horn in Sunder unto this day. Read. In all his works, he praised the Holy One most high with words of glory. Come on. With his whole heart, he sang songs and loved him that made him. See that thing right there? So David was always praised, giving the most high God praise all the time. All praises to the most high. However the thing small it is, praise the Lord. You understand? That's the spirit we all must have. You understand? That's the spirit of what? Humility. To understand the most high God is the one that is in control of everything. Go ahead. Verse 9. He said, singers also before the altar, mm -hmm. that by their voices they might make sweet melody and daily sing praises in their songs. And daily sing praises in their songs because they were prophesying by singing. Go ahead. He beautified their feasts and set in order the solemn times until the end. Go ahead. That they might praise his holy name and that the temple might sound from morning. See that thing? That's what we're doing today. We are beautifying what? Is as he beautified their feasts and set in order the solemn times until the end that they might praise his holy name. That's what we're doing today. You understand? The little that the Lord has blessed us with, we observe the high holy days. You understand? We teach our people the laws of God. No matter what's going on, you understand? We always go out there. Because why? Don't, don't worry about the numbers right now. You worry about keeping God's commandments and do what the Lord has commanded us to do. The Lord will increase in due time. Understand that. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 11. Wait. The Lord took away his sins and exalted his horn forever. Come on. He gave him a covenant of kings and mm. a throne of glory in Israel. Because when, when the Lord took away David's sins, what, what did King David do? King David humbled himself before the Lord. He didn't make excuses after he slept with Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. You understand? The Lord judged him, but King David, he went before the Lord with a what? With a contrite spirit. He was sincere. And the Lord was able to hear his prayers and his supplication. And the Lord accept, accepted him when he returned unto the Lord. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Read again verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 11. Go ahead. The Lord took away his sins and exalted his horn forever. He gave him a covenant of kings and a throne of glory in Israel. You see that thing? The Lord did that thing. He says he gave him a covenant of kings and a throne of glory in Israel. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 49. Sirach 49, verse 4. Watch this.
Come the on. book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 49, verse 4. Where? All except David and Ezekiel and Josiah were defective. Mm. For they forsook the Lord the Most High, even the kings of Judah failed. You see that thing right there? So the Lord is saying, he says, listen, all except David, Hezekiah, that's Hezekiah, you understand? The father of Manasseh, he says, and Josiah, he says, they were defective. He says, everybody else was defective, for they forsook the law of the Mosai, even the kings of Judah failed. Why? Because the Mosai God, listen, they found favor in the sight of the Lord. You understand? They repented, they got themselves right. They didn't make excuses when the correction came. Watch this. Get that in Psalm 61, verse 7. I'm going to show you the spirit of our forefather, King David. This is the spirit he was rolling in. Watch this. Okay? When the Lord, he says what? He took away his sins. Watch this. Psalm 61, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 7. Read. Purge me with yourself, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. So taking David is praying here to the Lord. He's asking for forgiveness. He is pleading with the Lord for the Lord to forgive him. He says, purge me with his soap. Well, his soap was a what? Was a solution, a cleansing solution. He says, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Snow. Because the Lord is supposed to wash him what? With his word. Get that in John 15, verse 3. You understand? John chapter 15. You know what? Let's use the one in Psalms. Psalms 119, verse 9. Psalms 119, verse 9. Let's just read that one. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Go ahead. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way mm -hmm. by taking heed thereto according to thy word? You see that thing? That's how we cleanse our way. That's how we cleanse our evil way. We take heed to the word of God. So the most high God can wash us with his word. You understand? That's where Christ gets it from. Get that in John 15 verse 3. Christ is quoting David here. Watch this. John 15. Okay, verse 3. The book of John chapter 15 verse 3. Go ahead. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see what cleanses us? The word of God. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Now let's go back to Psalm 57, 51, verse 7 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 7. Go ahead. Purge me with yourself, and I shall be clean. Mm. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. We understand. The whiteness goes into what? Get that in. Um, mm. Nah, should I go to it now? Ah, let me just go to it. Get that in Revelation chapter 19. No, no, Revelation 14. I believe that's what I want, right? Hold on a second. No, might be chapter 19. Yes, read that. It's, uh, Revelation 19 verse 8. Read that for me. The book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 8. Go ahead. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, mm -hmm. clean and white. Clean and white. Go ahead. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. See, this clean and white linen is the righteousness of saints. So when it says, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow, it goes into the righteousness of the saints. Keeping of God's commandments. Application of God's laws. Go back to Psalm 51 now. Read verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verses 10. Go ahead. Creating me a clean heart, O God. Come on. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. What spirit is that? The Holy Spirit of discipline that we read about in Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 5. Read that again, verse 10. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 10. Creating me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a right spirit within me. Go ahead. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That's the prayer we all must have. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So that right spirit that he says he wants the Lord to renew in him is the Holy Spirit. You understand? Because it will be turning him into another man. It will create a clean heart in him. You understand? Read again verse 11. The book of Psalms. Chapter 51, verse 11. Wait. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So there's the new, the right spirit is the Holy Spirit, which is the free spirit. You understand? Because guess what? We get it freely. Watch this. Get that in James 1. Okay? Get that in James chapter 1, verse 5. Watch this. James, because the apostle James, he made mention of this thing. James 1, verse 5. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. Wait. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and appraiseth not. Come on. And it shall be given him. See that thing? He says, if any of you lack wisdom, he says, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, meaning freely. That's free spirit that must uphold you. Okay? Like we read in Psalm 51 verse 12. And appraiseth not. The, all, the Lord is not going to hold it back. He says, and it shall be given him. So you must ask the Lord to give you that Holy Spirit. And when you, the Lord gives it to you, you must do what? You must make sure that your house is in order, your spiritual house, like we were going over last night. Okay, watch this. Give me the book. Uh, give me the book of Ezekiel, 28, 20, Ezekiel 18, verse 27. Read that. Ezekiel 18, verse 27. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verses 27. Come on. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he had committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. That's exactly what King David did. King David did that thing. He didn't make excuses. Josiah also, he didn't make excuses. Hezekiah, he didn't make no excuses. So that's the, that's the, that's the example that the Lord left behind for us in these last days, to follow the same footsteps our forefathers rolled in. You understand when they return back to the Mosai. Read that again, verse 27. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 27. Again, when the wicked man turned away from his wickedness that he could that he had committed and mm. do it, that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. What you're not gonna die in your sins. You understand? It says what? It says, and do it that which is lawful and right. He says, he shall save his soul alive. Go ahead. Verse 28. Read. Because he considered. He does what? And he is away from all his transgression that he had committed. Oh, he, okay, read that again. Hold on. Because he what? Because he considered. Because he considered. He considers the evil that he has done. He's considering the wickedness that he has done. This, the laws that he's broken. The evil that is done before the Lord, you consider those things. That's what our forefather King David did. You understand? Saul didn't do that thing until it was too late because he was making excuses. He didn't want to take responsibility. He didn't want to take accountability. Do you understand? Read that again, verse 28. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 28. Read. Right. Because he, he considered it and turned away from all his transgressions that he had committed, Read. He shall not surely live, he shall not die. You see that thing? He shall surely live, he shall not die. Meaning he will not die in his sins. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Luke now. Give me Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Watch this. You know what? Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, give me Luke 135.
The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 28. Oh, verse 35. Luke 1, 35. Come on, pay attention. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The book of Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, mm -hmm. and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Really? Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, this is the angel speaking to Mary. You understand? The angel Gabriel in verse 26. It says, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the free spirit, the word of God. Watch this now. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 3. Okay, the Holy Spirit that will come upon Mary, the power of the highest will overshadow Mary, meaning will direct her on what to do. We are dealing with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Lord that will come upon you. Watch this. Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Let's read that. The book of Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Go ahead. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Because there was a problem in the church where the Jews that grew up in Greek customs were complaining against the Hebrews, meaning our forefathers that grew up in what? In the law. You understand? It says because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. You can read verse 1, it will tell you that. Okay? So now they say, listen, their disciples, the apostles are, listen, listen, let's set up men, let's set up a leadership under us that is going to be able to deal with such matters because they had other matters to deal with. You understand? But they needed men that were full of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Jump down to verse 5. Read. The book of Acts chapter 6 verse 5. Read. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicana, and Timon, and Paremenas, Parmenas. and Nicola. And Parmenas, go ahead. And Parmenas, Read. and Nicola, a proselyte of Antioch. A proselyte of Antioch. A proselyte is, was the Israelites that the, the Israelites that were living according to the Gentile customs that converted back to the laws of Moses. That's a proselyte. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 10. Come on, verse 10. The book of Acts chapter 6, verse 10. Read. And, they, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Let's talk about Stephen now. He says they were unable to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake because he was full of the Holy Ghost. Stephen. Okay, watch this. Now give me chapter 7. Okay. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Go ahead. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in rotten ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Remember, he's, a, he's addressing the Jews, the scribes and Pharisees that was rebellious as hell. You understand? And they were unable to resist the wisdom of the power by which he spake. So now he's telling them, he said, listen, you are stiff-necked, meaning you are rebellious, and uncircumcised in heart and ears, meaning you don't apply God's commandments. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. Because why? When you are stiff-necked and you are uncircumcised, meaning in your spirit, you will have the spirit of resistance. That's the point. You will have the spirit of resistance, which is the spirit of Satan. Get that in Zacharias, okay? That's why it says you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Get that in Zechariah 3 verse 1. The book of Zechariah 3 verse 1. Go ahead. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan at his right hand to resist him. You see that thing? 
and Satan at his right hand to resist him. Instead of the most high God to be in your right hand, Satan is in your right hand to resist what? To resist God's counsel, God's commandments, like our forefathers was doing in the book of Acts chapter 7 when Stephen was rebuking them. So go back to Acts 7.51 again. The book of Acts chapter 7 verses 51. Go ahead. He is stiff necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears. Mm. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did so to you. You do always resist. Resist because why? Satan is at their right hand. They always resist the Holy Ghost. As our fathers did in the wilderness, so do we this day in 2021. Go ahead, verse 52. Read. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of mm. whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. You see, you see, our forefathers, the prophets, he says they were persecuted because they showed before of the coming of the just one. So they were prophesying the coming of Christ. They had the Holy Ghost on them as well. The Holy Ghost was upon them. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. You see that thing? The Holy Ghost that they were resisting was the laws of God, the word of God, the spirit of the Lord. That's what they were resisting. The Holy Ghost, the same spirit of Christ that will guide Mary on what to do. Once the spirit of the Lord is upon you, the spirit of the, the Most High God is the one that is ordering your steps. Understand that thing. Okay, so go back to Luke 1. Okay, Luke 1 verse 35 again. The book of Luke, chapter 1 verse 35. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power mm. of the high shall overshadow thee. That Therefore, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. The power of the highest, meaning the power of the most high God will overshadow you, will direct you on what to do and where to go. Where to go, what to do when you arrive there. Okay, hold this. Give me that in Psalms 37 verse 23. Okay, read that. Psalms 37 verse 23. The book of Psalms chapter 37 verses 23. Mm -hmm. the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord come on and he delighted in his way you, this man, this man which is a good man according to the laws of God Luke 8 15 it says what? it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way so if you apply God's commandments your steps will be ordered by the most high God the Holy Spirit will overpower, will, uh, over, will overpower you. The power of the highest will overshadow you, will direct you on what you need to do, how we need to build a camp, what, where we need to teach. When we arrive there, what must we teach? When the people ask the questions, how are we going to answer them? We're going to edify them. We're going to slay the demons that go against this book. So on, that's all the spirit of the, the Lord doing this thing. It's not any of us. Okay? So let's go back. Go back to Luke 1, verse 35. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Read. Therefore, also, a holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Jump down to verse 41 now. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe lived in a womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? It's uh, the same spirit that jumped on Mary is the same spirit that jumped on Elizabeth. You understand? When Mary got to her cousin's place, you understand? The babe lived, meaning John the Baptist lived in Elizabeth's womb. Okay. He, go, he got excited. Jump down to verse 67. So what's going on is that the Holy, the Spirit of the Lord will, what will guide you to prophesy. You'll prophesy the things that are written in this book. Today, the things that we teach about, 
what we prophesy about is written already. Our job is to make it, is to study, to apply God's commandments so we can receive understanding. Go out there, give our people the sense. Make it make sense to them. You understand? It's called prophecy. We teach Deuteronomy 28. It happened already. You understand? That's history. Our people must know that thing. You understand? And we teach you also repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's prophecy because the kingdom of heaven has not been established yet on earth, but it is at hand. You understand? America is going to be destroyed. Two thirds of our people will not make it in Babylon the Great. You see that thing? The Lord will gather us from all over where we are scattered. The nations will collect, will bring us to Zion also. That's what we, that's what, that's prophecy right there. You understand? Because the spirit of the Lord is upon the prophets. Okay? Now read verse 67. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 57. Read. Now Elizabeth was full. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. Hold on. Wait. What, wait. what verse you at? No, verse 67. Apologies, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 67. Go ahead. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. And prophesied, say. You see that thing? That's the same thing that happened to Saul. When he met that company, when he met the company of prophets and they prophesied, he also prophesied among them because the spirit of the Lord jumped on him. So what's going on here it says Zechariah, which is John the Baptist's father, he says he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The spirit of the Lord was upon him. And he started to prophesy about the things that are to come. Go ahead. Verse 68. Read. Blessed be the God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Go ahead. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Read. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Read. As he spake by the mouth of the holy, of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. You see, he's prophesying. Is that he's, he's telling you that the prophets that came before him, they also prophesied of the coming Messiah. Already Mary has already been given prophecy of what was coming. Elizabeth also, John the Baptist's father's wife, John the Baptist's mother also had the Holy Ghost upon him. You understand? Of the coming Messiah. So they are prophesying. Once the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you'll be able to prophesy of the things to come as it is written. You understand? Go ahead. That we should be saved from our enemies. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. So you know, you know what's heavy about this verse, right? What's heavy about this verse is that our people in the world, our people in the world, they, they want everybody to be saved. You know why they want everybody to be saved? Because the Holy Spirit of the Lord is not upon them. Once the Holy Spirit of the Lord is upon you, the things that you will speak, is the things that will be biblically sound and you'll find them as they are written. But our people, they want everybody to get delivered. You understand that? They, yeah, that's a, that's a prime example that the Holy Spirit is not upon them. The reason why I'm bringing this class out is so that you brothers can understand what does it mean to have the Holy Spirit? You understand? What does it mean? When you read Acts 7, 51 to 53, you will understand all the history that we just brought out. Okay, watch this. Now, Give me, give me the book of Luke. Give me Luke 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Watch this. Here's another of our forefathers that had the Holy Spirit upon him. Okay. And these are the things that he prophesied about. Okay. Watch this. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Go ahead. And behold, there was you know a what? man. Who... You know what? Wait, 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 wait. There's something I, I want to bring out based on that. Go back to Luke 171. I want to show you something with this verse right here. Okay. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 71. Go ahead. That we should be saved from our enemies mm -hmm. and from the hand of all the haters. You see, you see that verse right there? Our people, when they talk about salvation, salvation, when you read that verse right there, our people don't believe it. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit of the Lord is not upon them. That's why they, they, they struggle with this. 
Because spiritually, this is what they know, but they don't want to admit it. Wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 7. I'm going to show you something with this thing. Watch this. This is what they don't want to accept. Okay? That's why they will resist when this scripture comes out. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. Read. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies. You see that thing? These are, the, these, these are the two things we must accept as a people in order for us to get delivered. We must accept that, we must accept both things. The salvation of the righteous, that's what we read in First Samuel, okay? And destruction of the enemies. These two things we must accept in order for us to get delivered. The condition for our deliverance is that our enemies must be destroyed. That's what our people have not understood yet. And because they don't have the Holy Spirit, that's why they have the spirit of resistance. Why? That's the spirit of what? Christianity, which is a deceptive spirit in the minds of our people. Okay? Watch this now. Get Luke 2, verse 25. Luke 2, verse 25 now. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 25. Go ahead. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon, whose name uh -huh. was Simeon. And Read. the same man was just and devout. So this waiting. man, hold on. This man, our forefather Simon, you understand? Simeon, okay. Simeon, that's Simon. This man, Simeon, it says he was, he was just and he was devout. I mean, he kept the commandments. Waiting for the what? Waiting for the consolation of Israel. Mm. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. The Holy Ghost was upon him. He was waiting for the Messiah. Because he understood by what? By the spirit of the Lord that was upon him, that Messiah is coming. Just like the spirit jumped upon Mary, jumped upon our foremother Elizabeth, jumped upon our forefather Zacharias, is the, it's the same thing that's happening to him right here. You understand? It says, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And he began to do what? Read the next verse. Go ahead. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. That Stop he, right there. It was what? And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost would be for him to wait for the consolation of Israel. The only reason why he could wait for the consolation of Israel, meaning what? The birth of the Messiah, was it had to be revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost, meaning the spirit of the Lord. Just like the spirit of the Lord revealed itself unto Samuel regarding Saul, that's what we're reading here, unto Nathan regarding King David, the same thing. Okay, come on. And was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he Read. should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. You see that thing? That he was not going to see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Meaning he was not going to what? It was not time for him to die yet until he saw the birth of the Messiah. He saw the Messiah after he was born. He understood this thing by the Holy Ghost goes by the spirit of the Lord upon him. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of First Peter 1, verse 11. This is how he knew. Okay, First Peter 1, verse 11. Let's read that. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. Searching what, or what manner of time, the spirit of Christ which was in them, did mm. signify. Right. When it testified beforehand the sufferings mm. of Christ, come on, and the glory that should follow. You see that thing? So our forefathers, they searched. They searched what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. They did signify about the coming of the Messiah. It did signify the second coming of Christ. When will the, what, what signs are we going to see before the Lord is make his second return. The, our forefathers said the spirit of the Lord was upon them to know that thing. 
to be able to gauge, to, to tell the times when the Lord will make, will, will make his appearance. You understand? The first time and now the second time is he's coming to return. You understand? Read on, verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed. It was what? Unto whom it was revealed. Unto the prophets it was revealed. Go ahead. That not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Mm. Which things the angels desire to look into. The angels goes into what the leaders of Israel that the Lord will raise up in these last days. So, but he says it was revealed unto him, not only just unto themselves only, but unto us that we are, they are ministering unto, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. You see that thing? Because Christ is gone, but his spirit is with us to deliver the good news to our people, to prophesy unto them. That's what we're doing. You understand? So all this prophesying that is happening in the churches that know uh, in your house, you know, in your fridge, you know, there's an onion. Oh, of course, you're going to find an onion in somebody's fridge. You understand? There's milk in your fridge. And then, oh, I'm Pela. You know what? You're not Bushiri. No, no, no. That's a false prophet. He's not prophesying nothing. You understand? The spirit of the Lord is not upon them. The spirit of the Lord is not upon T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar. Bushiri, you understand? Mboro, the spirit of the Lord is not upon Pastor Mukuba. No, the spirit of Satan is upon me. Understand that thing. Okay, watch this. Now, give me Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 21. We're still dealing with this. The spirit of the Lord which was sent from on high. Okay, read that. Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 21. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 8, verses 21. Go ahead. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, mm. except God gave her me. Read. And that was a point of wisdom also, to know whose gift she was. Read. I prayed unto the Lord and besought him, and with my whole heart I said. Now, now King Solomon, he says he prayed for her. He prayed for her. The hair is wisdom in verse 1. Read verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom Chapter of Solomon. 8, verse 1. Chapter 8, verse 1. Go ahead. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily. Mm. And sweetly does she order all things. The wisdom of the Lord will order all things sweetly. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 9. Okay, watch this. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works. And was present when thou madest the world, and knew what was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. So King Solomon is talking about wisdom because he's praying to the Lord for this wisdom. Read on. Come on. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens mm. and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me. Right. That I may know what is pleasing unto thee. The only way you're going to know what is pleasing unto the Lord, you must have the spirit of the Lord upon you, which is what the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. Which is God's commandments, which will give you the spirit of understanding of what the scriptures are saying. Read. Right? For she knoweth and understandeth all things. Mm. And she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. You see that thing? It says, because she knoweth all, she knoweth and understandeth all things. That's why our forefather Zachariah, she knew, she understood, he understood all things. He knew all things. Mary, okay, our foremother. Elizabeth, our foremother. Oh, the prophet Samuel, the prophet Nathan, and so forth. The spirit of the Lord was upon them, and they knew all things, and they understood all things. You understand? Just like our forefather, Simeon. He understood that. He understood. He says, I don't want to, I'm not ready to go yet until I saw the consolation of Israel. Meaning what? The Messiah. Okay? Now go back to Luke. 
Okay. You know what? Give me First Corinthians one twenty four. Let me show you something heavy about this thing. First Corinthians one, verse twenty four. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter one, verses twenty-four. Go ahead. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. See that Jesus, the Christ, the Black Messiah, He is the wisdom of God. Now you you really need to think about this thing. That's some heavy stuff, right? Watch this. I'm going to show you something subtle about what we just read in Luke. Go back to Luke two, okay? Luke chapter 2, pay close attention. Luke chapter 2, verse 26. Watch this. Come on, Luke 2, verse 26. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 26. Read. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost mm. that he should not see death before here before he had seen the lord's christ now i want you to think about this thing right christ is not born yet you understand so so no christ is born in verse 21 because yeah what are they doing they um they they are circumcising him he's on the eighth day but he has not seen him yet you understand he has not seen him christ is born but he has not seen christ yet but he's going to see him then that's when he's going to be taken He's going to return back to the Father. But I want to show you something with this verse right here. Read that verse again. Verse 26. Pay the close attention. Of the two verses, verses 26. Go ahead. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. Hold on. So Christ, he, 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 he's, he, pro, he was prophesying about Christ. You understand? Christ is still a baby. Okay? Christ is still a baby. And he's prophesying with the spirit of Christ. Mm. That's heavy, right? Think about it. Christ is still a baby. And he's prophesying in the spirit of Christ. So the prophets that came way before, you understand? Prophet Samuel, David, King Solomon. You understand? All the prophets that came before. All of them were prophesying in the spirit of Christ before the Messiah was even born. Mm. That's heavy, right? That's a mind-bending thought right there. That's some heavy stuff. You, you brothers understand that? Are yes, you sir. Brothers understand what yes, sir. That's some heavy yes, stuff right there. Now watch this. Read verse 26. Okay. Read verse 26 again. The book of Luke chapter 2 verse 26. Go ahead. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost mm. that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. Come on. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. Hold on. So he, came, he says he came by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. He came by the Spirit of Christ in the temple. Go ahead. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, Read. then took he, then took he him up in arms and blessed God and said, He says he took him, he, he says, then took he took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Go ahead. Read. Lord, now lettest thou thy servants depart in peace. According to thy word. Leave verse 29 again. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 29. Go ahead. Lord, now lettest thou thy servants depart in peace according to thy word. He says, now my, thy servant can depart in peace because now I've held the child, I bless the Lord. You understand? And he says, he came into the temple in the spirit of Christ. To come and see Christ when he was still a child. Mm. Go ahead. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. You see that thing? For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The consolation of Israel in verse 25. 
Because guess what? He knew that, okay, he's going to be responsible for delivering us, but not during that time. Okay, obviously. Go ahead. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Mm, which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people. Go ahead. Keep reading. A light, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. He says, a light to lighten the Gentiles, meaning northern kingdom, to bring northern kingdom into the what? Into the fold. So Simeon is prophesying right here. He says, this Christ, this Messiah, is going to be a light that will lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Get that in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, okay? Luke chapter 1, verse 79. You know, I'll start at verse 78. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 78. Mm -hmm. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from, an, from on high had visited us. That day spring is talking about Christ. That's not a question, it's a statement. The day spring from on high has visited us. Read on, verse 79, come on. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So now Christ will do what? He will be a light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, meaning in slavery. Okay, get that in Luke 4, I mean Matthew 4. Get Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16. Because he was, he was what? Simeon is prophesying that Christ is going to be a light to the Gentiles, meaning northern kingdom. We're going to read about them right now. Okay. Look, I'm in Matthew 4. You know what? Read verse 15. Matthew 4, 15. The book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. The land of Zabulon and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Because he was go he's going to be a light to the Gentiles. Go ahead. Zebulon, Naphtali, these are northern kingdom tribes. Okay, come on. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. Read. And to them which sat in, in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. That's that light that Simeon is talking about. Go back to Luke 2 now. Luke chapter 2 and verse 32 again. The book of Luke chapter 2, verses 32. Go ahead. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Meaning all 12, all 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. The things that were spoken of his son, okay, by Simeon. Go ahead. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, the child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. Read. And for a sign which shall be, which shall be spoken against. Because the scribes and Pharisees are going to speak against him. The fall and the rising goes into what? He will be crucified. He will rise again the third day. Go ahead. Verse 35. Read. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. You, hold on. Stop right there. It says, yea. A sword shall pierce through thine or thy own soul also. Their own soul is talking about Joseph's own soul. Who's that? Jesus the Christ. It says a sword will pierce through his own soul. Read on. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Because many of our people, they said, crucify him. You understand? Watch this. Get that in Revelation 1, verse 7. Okay? Revelation 1, verse 7. He says, a, a sword shall pierce through his own, your own soul also. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, mm. and they also which pierceth him. You see that? And, and they also which pierced him. They also which pierced him. Meaning those that was torturing him, you understand, including those that plug, put a javelin through his what? On his side, 
to make sure he was dead. Go ahead. Come on. Verse 7 again. Revelation 1 verse 7. Stay with me. The book of Revelation 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Mm. And they also which pierced him. And all, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Amen to that thing. Amen to that. Okay. The Lord will bring forth vengeance upon them. Okay, let's go back. Luke chapter 2, verse 35. Luke 2, verse 35. Let's go back there again so we can understand what is being said here. Read again, verse 35. The book of Luke chapter 2, verse 35. Go ahead. Yea, a soul shall pierce through thy own soul also, mm. that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Because our forefathers, they said what? crucify him let his blood fall upon us and our children get that in matthew 27 verse 22 read that the book of matthew chapter 7 verses 22 no, 27 27 verse 22 excuse me sir the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 22. Read. Pilate, Pilate said unto them, Read. What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? Come on. They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. You see, that's our forefathers. Let him be crucified instead of Barabbas. They say, Let Christ be crucified. Okay. Um, go ahead. And the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. Jump down to verse 25. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Our people is wicked as hell. They are doing the same thing today. Because I'll, I'll give an example. When we go to the streets and teach, especially those mothers and fathers that be working with their sons and daughters, their children. When we teach them that Jesus Christ is black, they say, no, 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 don't teach my son there. Don't teach my daughter there. Don't believe that. You will see the son is interested to see, wait a minute, why am I seeing, I'm seeing Jesus, the person that is called Jesus, that they call Jesus in the church is white, but I'm seeing this black one right here. So the child's spirit is kindled. The mother will say, no, 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 get away from them. Let him be crucified and he let his blood be upon us and our children. That's how they do it today. You understand? That's how they do it this day. Understand that thing. Okay. Watch this. Get Luke. Okay. Luke 2 now, verse 40. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 40. Go ahead. And the child grew and was strong in spirit, mm. filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. You see that thing right there? He's talking about Christ now. He says he grew and worked strong in spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit was upon him, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Jump down to verse 46 now. Watch this. Now, remember, we read about the prophets that came before Christ, and yet they were walking in the spirit of Christ before he was even born. They were prophesying about him, but they were walking in his spirit. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Okay. Now, now the spirit is upon the man himself. Watch this, verse 46. Go ahead. The book of Luke chapter 2, verses 46. Go ahead. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. The doctors is talking about the scribes and Pharisees because they were the doctors of the law. So he was among them, hearing them, what they were teaching, and he was asking them questions. Go ahead, verse 47. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Mm, you see that thing? He had understanding and he was able to answer them. Jump down to verse 52. Go ahead. The book of Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Go ahead. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. 
You see that thing because and guess what we what, what is Luke saying right here? Read verse fifty two again. I'm going to show you something about this verse. Read it. The book of Luke, chapter two, verse fifty two. Go ahead. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. It says he increased in wisdom and stature, meaning what? Understanding. You understand? And age in terms of the scriptures and in favor with God and men. Watch this. That the stature also goes into his height as he was growing up. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Okay? Because this is what he applied. Okay? Proverbs 3. Verse 5. Watch this. You know what? Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Read verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Let thine heart keep my commandments. Jump down to verse 4 now. Go ahead. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. That's exactly why. That's why he found the favor with God and men. Because why? He did not depart from the laws of God that his parents taught him. You see that thing right there? That's what Proverbs... We are, Luke is quoting Proverbs right here. Okay, watch this. Now, give me Luke. Okay, give me Luke 24 verse 45. Now he's... Is full of the Holy Ghost, is full of the spirit of the most high God now. Look what he's doing now with the disciples, with the dream team that he had. Watch this. Luke 24, verse 45. The book Come of on. Luke, chapter 24, verses 45. Then Come on. open he they are understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see what he did to the disciples? He says, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Meaning the Holy Ghost gave them the spirit of understanding that he breathed on them. You understand that? He breathed on them the understanding of the scriptures and they understood the scriptures. Only the Lord can do that thing. The spirit, the most High God is the one that gives the okay for you to understand. The Lord, the most high God is the one that gives the okay to come into this truth. That's what the Lord does. If, it's the, mo if the most high does not give consent, you will not come into this truth. And if you do, you also have a purpose to be that heretic, to be that wicked Negro, so we can use you as an example of what not to do. The sisters as well. You understand? Watch this. Get John 20, verse 22. John 20, verse 22. The book of John, chapter 20, verses 22. Go ahead. And when, he had, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? He breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. The understanding, the power also, because they had power, the disciples had spiritual power. And they had understanding, wisdom, and knowledge with the Holy Spirit that Christ breathed on them. You understand? Watch this. John 14, verse 26. I'm going to show you something with this verse right here. Okay? John chapter 14, verse 26. Watch this. The book of John chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, mm. whom the Father will send in my name. Go ahead. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now that's heavy right there. He says, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So what I need you men and women to understand is this, right? The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Okay, we've been going over that. Whom the Father will send in my name, because only the Most High God is the one that Send the Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the Black Messiah. It says, and He, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, 
shall teach you all things, meaning the spirit of the Lord is going to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, I'm going to show you something with this, right? Get the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. He says, the comforter will bring all things to your remembrance. I'm going to give you some examples here. Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Go ahead. Remember the days of old. Mm. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Now, you see that part right there? It says, remember the days of old. Right? Remember the days of old. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 2, verse 1. It says, remember the days of old. It says, the Holy Ghost, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will bring all things to your remembrance. God, it says, remember the days of old. Genesis 2, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth are finished, and all the hosts of them. Read. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work, all his work, which he had made. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So now this is the Sabbath right here. The Lord is sanctifying and ordaining the Sabbath day on the seventh day, right? The Sabbath day is a day of old. Understand that? The Sabbath day is a day of old that God ordained when he finished all his work. You understand? The Sabbath day is a day of old, which the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter, will bring that to the, to the minds of our people will bring that remembrance to the minds of our people. Because the reason why our people don't remember the Sabbath, you understand, is because the Holy Spirit has not jumped on them. You see that thing? The Spirit of the Lord has not jumped on our people. That's why they cannot remember the, the days of old. That's why the Holy Spirit, they cannot, they, nothing can be brought to their remembrance because they reject, they always resist the Holy Ghost. So nothing is brought to their remembrance. You understand that? Watch this. Get that in Exodus 20, verse 8. Exodus 20, verse 8. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You see that? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Holy Ghost will bring the Sabbath day to your remembrance so that you know how to keep it holy. Because the prophets will teach you. You understand? I'm going to show you something in a second like we read in First Samuel. Okay, watch this. Get, Hebrew, get Numbers 15.38. I'm going to use these basic precepts here. Watch this. Numbers 15, verse 38. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of the garments throughout their generations. Go ahead. And that they and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So now this is a law regarding this is the law of the fringes, right? Go ahead. Verse 39. Come on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments. And remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. Stop right there. So you see that the fringes will, will help you to remember all the commandments of the Lord, including the high days. You see that thing? So the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance, will bring the laws of God to your remembrance, will bring the, the identity to your remembrance, who you are, where you come from, who's your God, and how are you supposed to serve him? The Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, will bring all things to your remembrance. Why? Because it's, the reason why it says the comforter, the, the laws of God that has that is being brought to your remembrance, your identity that is being brought to your remembrance, that will going to comfort you in your captivity. You'll understand why you are in the condition that you are in 
and your mind will begin to do what? Your mind will begin to have peace because now you know the problem to your sickness. Now you begin to know where to go to be taught on how to fix and cure the sickness. That's a heavy thing. The reason why you see our people resisting the Holy Ghost, that's why nothing is brought to you at their remembrance and they will die in their sins if they don't repent. And our people always talk about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. They say, no, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. But they don't remember to wear pants, to wear dresses as a sister. The brother don't remember, you must not, you must not have a girlfriend. He don't remember that. He doesn't remember. Because the Holy Spirit is not on them. You see that thing? Yes, sir. That's what I want you men to understand. Watch this. Give me, go back to First Samuel, okay? Go back to First Samuel. I'm going to show you something with this. First Samuel chapter 10, right? First Samuel 10 and verse, verse 9. Watch this. Come on, 1 Samuel 10, verse 9. Watch this thing. First book of Samuel, chapter 10, verses 9. Read. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Because the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Go ahead, watch this. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Now I want to show you something with this, because this has happened to many of you that are in this truth right now. You see that part right there? It says, and when he, they came hither, when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. Okay, some of you, you saw us teaching on the streets, you stopped. You came to the street corner, that would be the hill in this instance. You came to the street corner, you understand, and you saw us prophesy. You understand? It says, um, the prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Because what were the prophets doing? They were prophesying. They were teaching. Because the Holy Spirit was upon them to bring to the remembrance the brother that is standing in front of the prophets or the sister standing in front of the prophets. The only way that the spirit of the, the Lord will come upon the brother in front of the prophets or the sister in front of the prophets, they must not resist the Holy Ghost like it says in Acts 7.51. If they resist the Holy Ghost, guess what's going to happen to them? They are not going to prophesy. The spirit of the Lord is not going to come upon them. You men understand that? Read again verse 10. Yes, sir. First book of Timon, chapter 10 verse 10. Right. And when they came to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. That's a process right there. This is a process. It's not an one-day thing. No, it, this is months, years. You understand? It says, it came to pass. It says, well, no, when they came hither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. That's why when we go to the streets, we are a company of prophets. And the Spirit of God came upon him. Meaning the brother that decide that the Lord says, okay, stop right there and listen to the prophets. Today, I'm going to answer your prayers. Once the brother decides to stop and they don't resist when the prophets prophesy unto him, it says what? It says, and the spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. For in order for him to prophesy, he must set his house in order. He must repent, get his mind right, repent as an Israelite and keep God's commandments. Then once his house is in order, he will begin to prophesy among those company of prophets that he saw on the street corners. Understand that thing, okay? All praises to the Most High. I'm gonna end the class right there, okay? Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, first, first Corinthians 11. Chapter 11. Verses 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This to ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.